We appreciate you being here today. Um, one of your stops today was the great graduation. How did that go? Oh, it was wonderful. It was a really, uh, I think, a really great celebration of police officers from around the country that are committed uh, to helping reduce gang violence, to help young people make good choices in their lives, especially those youth that are already challenged with issues like poverty, um, hunger, uh, maybe violence in their communities or even in their homes. These officers have gone through a very detailed training uh, to help, uh, again, to help youth uh, uh, make the right choices, uh, avoid gang activity, drug activity. And La Crosse is home to one of the regional training centers for the GREAT program, mm -hmm. um, which is a real credit to this community, the police force in this community, and the commitment uh, that La Crosse has to reducing the number of, uh, of people who engage in gang activity and violence and uh, destructive behaviors. Is it a, a valuable tool, that sort of kind of community-based program? You know, community-based uh, policing of all sorts seems to be um, proving to be very effective. Uh, but programs like these uh, actually need to be um, evaluated and there needs to be evidence for sustained funding. And in fact, there's been a longitudinal study of the effectiveness of the GREAT program in particular. And uh, I think the results are pretty positive that this does make a difference. The program reaches nearly a half million students a year uh, through all the officers who have gotten the intensive training. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think just that number alone is pretty significant. Uh, you then moved on to a, a tour of a local business? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. I visited Chart uh, Energy and Chemicals, uh, where uh, I, I learned an awful lot. We were talking about uh, both uh, the, the resurgence of manufacturing in Wisconsin and in America, um, the opportunities that have presented themselves to Chart in particular, uh, but also because their company produces products um, that uh, deal with the natural gas industry. Uh, mm -hmm. We also talked a lot about the changing energy landscape in the United States these days. You know, we used to be very energy dependent on other countries for a variety of fuels. Uh, but with the resurgence of natural gas in the United States, um, we are seeing a different equation. And, and because their products relate to natural gas, they're seeing some new opportunities that are pretty exciting to the local economy here in La Crosse. Is it realistic to think that manufacturing will be a, a strong job source for workers in Wisconsin? You know, it's absolutely realistic to believe that, but no economy can um, exist and, and thrive without being diversified. So I, I don't think we should ever put all of our eggs in one basket. Um, that's mm -hmm. foolhardy. But I do think that we um, still stand to gain uh, good paying manufacturing jobs. Uh, we also know that manufacturing has changed in recent years, and to stay ahead of global competition, we have to do different things. It's less labor intensive than it was in the last century. We know that. Um, but this state has a reputation of making things, whether it's in the agricultural economy where we make cheese and we make brats and we make beer, or in the manufacturing economy where we make um, engines and tools and ships and all sorts of uh, things like that. Um, I don't think you can have an economy that's built to last that doesn't have some strong sector that makes things. I want to shift uh, gears to a national topic that a lot of people have been talking about recently, and that's the Supreme Court's ruling on the Hobby Lobby case. What is your reaction to that ruling? Well, first of all, I'm disappointed. Uh, the idea that somebody's boss is going to have influence and um, be able to make certain decisions about health care coverage, about access to contraception, is deeply disturbing to me. I think that has to be the individual's choice. Um, that said, the decision could have been a lot worse. It was limited in some ways. I haven't had a chance to read it fully, um, but I understand that it was limited to closely held corporations. Now, still, I think that's too far. But that said, uh, it could have been a lot worse. Um, we're going to have to figure out what to do about a case like this, because really, uh, a lot of the vision behind health care reform is that it would empower the individual, the patient, to make decisions about their own health care. We didn't want to insert somebody's boss as an extra decision maker in the process.
Uh, speaking of, it's become very political and speaking of politics, just recently the House Speaker said he wouldn't allow a vote on immigration. The President has said he's going to use some executive power to move that forward. Are you comfortable with the amount of times the President has been using his executive power? Well, I want to back up a second on that question and say that I really think uh, Speaker Boehner should rethink uh, what he said about uh, immigration reform. We have a broken system. Nobody questions that. And the Senate over a year ago passed on a very broad bipartisan basis a comprehensive immigration reform bill. Mm -hmm. It was crafted by th four Republicans and four Democrats. Um, this is the type of consensus that I think the American people are looking for. And Speaker Boehner ought to bring this for a vote. I'm confident it would pass if he did. It would be a bipartisan measure. Um, and maybe he doesn't want that. But I would like to see uh, the House really start working together. Uh, that said, because our system is broken, because there's a crisis on our border, I think it's really uh, you know, basically backed our president into a corner. He would much prefer to see Congress act on this. So I'll look closely at what he recommends. I know he's asked his Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary Johnson, his uh, Attorney General, Eric Holder, to uh, recommend the actions that the executive branch can take in the absence of the House of Representatives doing its job. Mm -hmm. um, if what is recommended is within the President's authority, I will support uh, his taking action. Congress and the House in particular has left him with little choice. The kind of the message from the right right now is that the president's doing it too much, that it's more of a, he's acting more like a king than a president. Do you think he's using his executive privilege too much? You know, I think that uh, when I review the number of times that the Senate has passed bipartisan legislation, sent it over to the House, um, and the House has uh, refused to take it up. Um, you know, I begin to understand why uh, if we're going to move this country forward, if we're going to move this economy forward, that um, the, the president must explore those options. Now, uh, the downside of all of that is, uh, you know, the next president can overturn those. It's only uh, an executive order. Many presidents don't. They allow uh, the executive orders of their predecessors to stay into in effect. Mm -hmm. um, but for example, uh, you know, the, the Congress, both houses, have failed to step up on increasing the minimum wage. But the president has said, well, let's have our government contractors at least increase the minimum wages that they pay. Mm -hmm. I think those are prudent steps. They're certainly well within his authority. And they move our economy forward and really you know, help bolster our struggling middle class. You mentioned a couple issues, immigration, minimum wage, that the House isn't moving on, that lawmakers aren't moving on. Are we going to see anything in President Obama's second term? Or are we going to see just more and more gridlock? into the midterms and then into the next presidential election? Well, there is a measure that was passed last week that I'm celebrating, and that was the reauthorization of the Workforce Investment Act. You know, in our state, we talk a lot about the skills gap. We talk a lot about uh, people who are displaced in our severe recent recession who uh, need to return for uh, new job skills to uh, land on their feet. Uh, we talk about the long-term unemployed who, for weeks and weeks of looking for work, haven't been able to land a job. This measure is squarely focused on that challenge. And I'm very pleased, um, after uh, you know a year of work, that both houses of Congress did see fit to pass that, and the president is going to sign that into law. Mm -hmm. There's another measure that I hope we'll see advance. It may be a very focused and targeted measure, but one that's so important, and that is dealing with the, uh, the crisis of the wait times our veterans have to face when they um, uh, are, are asking for perhaps their first appointment at a VA clinic. Mm -hmm. The story came out of Phoenix, Arizona, and a lot of us wondered, is this happening elsewhere? And we've now gotten some of the results. And I do feel that our veterans are not receiving the timely care across the nation that they deserve. We're very close. The Senate's passed a bill. The House has passed a bill. I hope that the differences between the two measures can be resolved and that within the next week or so, we can send to the president's desk um, a, a, a bill to uh, really address this. Uh, I had the honor uh, yesterday of being able to visit two VA health facilities in Wisconsin, an inpatient uh, facility in Toma, an outpatient facility in Chippewa Falls. 
both of those facilities are doing much better than the national average with regard to wait times and quality of care. Uh, but that's not the case everywhere, and our veterans um, deserve uh, and have earned the timely treatment uh, and, and care. We've seen gridlock in Washington like never before. Is it getting better at all? You know, or are I we kind of stuck where we are? I, I have to say that whenever an election is just around the corner, uh, things slow down, and that's very disappointing because we have a lot left to do. We have mm -hmm. serious challenges facing our nation, and we have things that uh, reoccur on an annual basis that require our attention. Uh, but I do hope that once we pass that hurdle of this election, um, that we can uh, work both across the party aisle, but also, um, you know, in the interest of uh, our domestic economy. Because uh, I think still voters would tell you that uh, getting um, you know, a job that supports the family, getting ahead again, is job number one for Congress to pay attention to. All right. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.